Tito, and Tito, 212. Com check. DPS, go. Inco, go. PUS, go. Surgeon, go. Booster, go. Copy that. We have a go from you guys. This is talking sound. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Talking Sound Podcast, the only podcast on the internet where negative 10 is a number to be desired. Coming at you live once again from fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. I am Chris Jordan, your host, and today on the Talking Sound Podcast, we actually have my very good lifelong friend, Mr. John Seymour, president of Seymour Films here today. How you been, man? Lifelong friend. Well, I mean, I consider him. I'm 40. <laughs> We've been friends since I was like 18. You're right. So, You're right. like... <laughs> that, that's about as far back as my pickled brain can remember. So yeah, can that's, a that. can <laughs> that. that's a lifetime. That's a lifetime. Yeah, so, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, man. So you recently moved here to Las Vegas from Maine. Last March, yeah, I moved here. Yeah, I was in Maine twelve years. Yeah. And yeah. how was that move for you? Why did you make the move to begin with? Uh, I I kind of gotten to a point where I. I the work that I was wanting to get mm-hmm. wasn't available in New England. Uh, the jobs that were, I mean, I, I could have stayed in New England and kept working and doing the same thing, but I would have, I kind of would have just been working on the, you know, the same level, and I wanted to get to, a, I wanted to get to a higher level. Yeah. And then the reason I chose Vegas, uh, I wanted to set my business up here. I wanted to be as close to LA as I could, but I didn't want to be in LA. Well, I didn't, well, I, I didn't want to be in the LA <laughs> tax world. Yes, so I set yes. up in uh, tax friendly Nevada. Exactly. And it, it's a beautiful place. Like uh, My episode the other night was all about the production of Las Vegas. Like, Las Vegas in and of itself is a production. It like, is. the whole place is just gobs of tech and production. It's amazing. It's a little overload, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's literally sensory overload. Now, Seymour Films. Tell us a little bit about that. When did you start it? Why did you start it, John? Uh, I started Seymour Films in January of 2008. So, yeah, we're going on uh, eight years. Yeah, actually eight years now. So uh, uh, I was running the main studios at the time, and I wanted to have uh, – I had some partners in that venture, and I wanted to have kind of my own production company to kind of do work that uh, that I wanted to do mm-hmm. and kind of go in a different direction uh, while staying and, and keeping the other main studios. Now now the ever, everyone else has, has left the main studios and I actually have that and I use it now as my kind of my uh, uh, indie offshoot small budget kind of stuff. Developmental and yeah. kind of crazy stuff. Experimental, Experimental films. Experimental stuff, stuff like that. that we might yeah. do. Passion Although, films. Yeah, well, passion. passion films I'd probably go with Seymour films, but um, yeah, experimental stuff, low budget horror uh, kind of stuff that I'm like, ah, I want Seymour Films' name on it because I want people to think Seymour Films is more of a, a higher end production company. And sure. Main Studios is kind of what we use for our, our beginning stuff. I mean, yeah. We'll take on projects that we're like, yeah, okay, that sounds like fun. We yeah. don't have a very but we don't have a budget, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll put something together and see how it looks. Yeah. Now it's a chance to try some stuff. You as as long as I've known you, you've been a film buff. I remember whenever I lived with you in Maine. I moved I, whenever I moved to Maine. It was actually to live with you. Right. Uh, and. I remember, good God, man, it was right at the beginning of Netflix, and buddy, you must have been getting every week at least a good six films from Netflix. It, oh, was, yeah. it was insanity. Like, I, it was it was foreign films, it was everything that we'd sit around and watch, and you are just like a cornucopia of film world knowledge when it comes to that kind of stuff. I've seen a lot of movies. Yeah. I, yeah. I was in Netflix from, I think they were still in beta when I got yeah. I, I bumped into them on the internet and said, that's brilliant. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah, I was getting a lot of movies. And I have. I've seen a ton of film. I've uh, been a movie fan. Yeah, my whole life. My mother got me started doing that, watching movies. And I've, yeah, seen everything. Well, not really, but seen now, a lot. But what is it that made you want to start producing films, John? Because that, that is an undertaking, and it's something that, like, you know, you've, you've kind of cut your teeth in the industry now and come about into your, into your own world. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting story. I, uh, I, I was, actually had a marketing company, Seymour uh, uh, Marketing Group, uh, and I was, uh, had formed a social networking weekly meeting group. Mm-hmm. I think you probably remember that when you were yeah, still there. Absolutely. Uh, social network of Maine. And we, uh, you know, I obviously got me in contact with a lot of people and one of them was a filmmaker. 
uh, who wanted me to do some marketing for their film projects. And I started doing a little bit of marketing and help. They kept trying to get me to come work for them. And of course, uh, my Jason, my business partner, and I had, I was like, you know, we're busy. We, we were starting up the magazines. Yep. Uh, we had uh, the concert series. You know, we had all these different things. Yeah. That we were doing, and we were really involved in music stuff at the time. Absolutely. Um, and uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, I don't know, we we'll get this thing. And then, and then Jason and I sat down, and he was getting ready to go back into the military. He said, oh, now's a good time to get out of this. So I went to him, and they uh, they bought me out. Basically, they bought the Seymour Marketing Group, and said, "You're right. We're going to take over all this. We'll take on all your work if you'll help us do the film stuff." Um, and Within a month, they shut down everything else we were doing, and like you're just going to run our film company. Nice. Yeah, basically, <laughs> basically yeah. Power but, uh, yeah, and power button. Yeah, chess move. Boom. <laughs> but yeah, so like I got thrown in there. Like, okay, you're going to produce this film, you know? And I was like, I have no idea how to produce a film. <laughs> and they said, but you're going to. Uh, the next thing I knew, like within days, I was on the phone, you know, talking to investors and things about this film, and I was like, this film project, and I. And it just kind of snowballed. And the next thing I know, I was like, oh, my God, I'm producing films. Yeah. And, yeah, before I knew it, it was commercials and music videos and all this stuff came on. Then we got the main studios, the actual physical studio uh, there in Maine, in Portland. And then it just all... Just snowballed. And But at the same time, I was like, this is exactly what I should have been doing. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's like, this is... I love every day of it. And I still do. Yeah. Sometimes, no, sometimes, sometimes some days more than others. But yeah. Literally today, the the crew lead of the show I'm here to work uh, came up to me and he was like, "And you know, I've I've heard you're a pretty interesting guy. We need to sit down and talk. How how's things going for you?" And I'm loving it, man. Yeah. He's like, "I've just seen you with the goofiest smile on your face, like the whole four days you've been here." I'm like, "I can't help it. I don't have a job. I have a career. Like I wake up every day and passionately get to do what I love." Daily. Like, how can I not have a smile on my face? Even on the worst day. Yeah. If I failed, I failed on my terms. I failed on what I want to do. Yeah. You know, and and to have that in your life is a totally life-changing situation. Yeah, absolutely. It's been, yeah, it's, 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 been, it's been amazing. Like I say, it's, it was a struggle. It took a lot. I mean, I learned, I learned a lot of it the hard way, you know, and, yeah. and, and kind of brought myself up. And I spent a good deal of money of my own money mm -hmm. to produce films. So people would come to me with ideas and they didn't yeah. make money and I spent my time and money doing it. You know, you can't go Stephen King's now on Netflix. That was the first feature I did. And, um, uh, I won't tell anybody, anybody how much money I made, but I can tell you it wasn't worth <laughs> sleeping on a, wasn't worth it when I slept on a floor in an empty apartment for a month, you know, <laughs> but, but I look back on it and it was worth it. You yeah, I mean, I love it. I, you know, I'm still in contact with those guys, and I, I can't be more thankful that they gave me the opportunity to come in and produce a feature film. I got the phone call one day. This is my phone call. Uh, I got the phone <laughs> call one day, and they were like, hey, blah, blah, blah. You know, this is Ronnie and Monroe, and um, we uh, heard about your main studios, and da-da-da, we're coming up to do this film. Can you produce a feature film? And I was like, absolutely. And I was like, what do you need? And they were like, oh, very little. And they, they gave me a list of things they needed. And I was like, can you do that? And I was like, oh, absolutely. I can do that. And I'm on the phone and I look at them and I go, oh, <laughs> now like, I, I have, have to do this. this. <laughs> like, I have no idea how I'm going to do it. They're probably watching. If they ever see this, they'll kill me. And I was like, I'm literally on the phone. I was like, I have no idea how to do that thing. But literally with a, with like four interns sitting in front of me, I was like, okay, you get on the phone and call this. You do this, this. And within 24 hours, I talked to Stephen King. Or it's to his secretary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to his personal assistant. To his people. To his personal assistant <laughs> yeah. and everything. And had gotten all the stuff, and I called him back. And I said, okay, we got all that done. What else do you need? He's like, you... They, they were like, wow. So they started putting more work on me and more work on me. And they get and they, they got to where they could trust me to do work for him. And it was... Um, yeah, it was it was an opening experience. I was like, wow, I can do this. I can... I mean, it's like any other business. You just manage it. You know? Yeah. Well, and sometimes, you know... Uh, you get better at it. <laughs> sometimes sometimes it really does because I mean even whenever I started out with HC Productions it was it was a point of necessity I'd gone home for a wedding in Houston and told my boss eight months before hey I got a wedding to go to and came back to no job right <laughs> and it was like I, I guess now I need to find some way to pay rent in a week and a half and it was go out 
hustle myself to clubs, hustle myself to bands that I used to work for, go out and do live recordings of poetry at coffee shops and sell them for five bucks each. And it was literally yeah. thrown ass into the deep end <laughs> of owning my own business. Yeah, I remember that. And, you know, sometimes, though, that is what it takes. It, it is what it takes to make it happen. Because it's a scary jump. It's a scary leap to get into that. Yeah, and I, I deal with that all the time. People are like, oh, I want to get I want to get involved. And I'm like, you really have to understand that if you aren't willing to jump, it's yeah. probably not going to work. Yeah. And it's going to suck. And it's really scary. And it's probably going to make you you know, wake up in the middle of the night and throw up. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's scary. Yeah. But... You know, at the you know, at the other end, you're either going to sink or you're going to swim. You know, yeah. and some people sink and then they go back and they have a, a perfectly happy life doing something else. Yeah, but but at least they try. You gave you gave it a shot. Exactly. And, you know, if you make it, you know, again, making it's a relative term. I mean, what's making it? You know, I make it because I can. I can make a living doing this. Mm-hmm. I can feed myself and pay my bills and do this. Yeah. You know, I, I could probably go do something else and make a lot more money and probably have a lot less headaches and a lot, you know, I wouldn't do it 24-7. I could yeah. do it 9 to 5 and have a normal life and I could go on vacations and I could have, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do any of that stuff. Yeah. I love what I do every day. Exactly. And if I, you know, I wake up in the middle of the night now and I'm not throwing up, I'm like, oh my God, I just dreamed of this script. Let me write these notes down because I'm going to start working this tomorrow. Yeah. You know, so I have a stack of those. <laughs> 700 I. Well, and... As far as production goes, uh, what what would you say is probably uh, the hardest part of producing a film? Uh, for let's just say not <laughs> not in general, but for the beginning producer. Yeah. For the beginning producer, someone who's just wanting to get into this, what what would be the first step that you would tell them to look into? I, th- um, you know, if anybody that wants to get into producing. I would say before you, you can hop into it and wing it and make it work and Mm -hmm. whatnot, but what you should really do, and and I didn't have this luxury, is get on some film sets and see what stuff is like. By the time I literally spent time on a film set, I was in charge and I was talking to people and I'd never been on a film set. I don't have any idea. I mean, I was like, you know, what you doing? Yeah. They're like, we're laughing somebody up. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, yeah. It wasn't that bad. But I, mean, I didn't know anything. Yeah, the I lingo, the terminology. Yeah. Yeah. I still don't know the terminology as yeah. well as I should. Yeah, you know, sometimes. Most of the time I do. You know? And we were talking about it a few minutes ago. It was like people ask me all the time about cameras and things. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm not a camera guy. I can get you to somebody that can answer any question you want about cameras. Yep. But there's a certain set of skills that... I've chosen to have, I sound like Liam Mason, there's a certain set of skills that I've chosen to have that I learn a little bit about camera and a little bit about mm-hmm. audio and a little bit of, enough to know that if I'm being screwed over, I know, I can tell. Yeah. Uh, you can tell if you're being bs yeah. If someone's yeah. just talking out the rar section. Yeah, I, I can usually figure that out unless they're really good. But, uh, uh, you know, get on some sets and learn, learn your way around and see how things move because it's a it's a different world than probably what you're coming from. Mm-hmm. Even if you're coming from music, it's a little bit different world. So get out there and, and see it. Uh, as far as producing, I think the hardest part uh, is juggling. Juggling, you know, 65, 70 things. Because in, in the indie world, you know, when you see the credits roll on Star Wars, they're rolling for 45 minutes, you know. Yeah. All the people involved. We do a shoot an indie film. We might have 20 people on, on board. Yeah. And... You know, the producer, at the end of the day, I'm the location scout, I'm the location manager, I'm the, you know, you know, a lot of times I do the extras casting, I do all, I do second AD work. So doing the so catering. You're <laughs> finding the caterers, hiring the caterers, figuring out the budget for the caterers, you know, line producing, all these different jobs that usually, I usually break it down, and when I when I tell people my pay, they're always like, wow, whatever, whatever, I don't want to pay you. I'm like, well. I'm doing 20 people's jobs. Here's, here's my <laughs> list of responsibilities for the day. Give me 20 people's jobs. Can I at least make two know, people's jobs worth of money? Yeah, can I make two people's jobs? <laughs> so, usually the answer is no. But, uh, but you, know, it's the, uh, you know, it's a lot of work in, it, in learning to juggle and also manage your time. Um, you know, and then also my biggest 
the biggest thing I have a problem with is saying no. It's looking at something and being like, I can't die. That's not going to work. Yeah. And that's still a hardest thing because my, my nature is always like, yeah, I can get do, it done. I can do anything. Yep. And I'm like, sometimes I'm like, you know, I probably should have told them that it wasn't yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Like that. Um, because, you know, there's, there are just some things you can't do for certain things. We could do it with a little more money or a little more time, but we can't do it with no time and no money. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or at least not on this budget well, in this time frame. Not yeah. with any quality that you want. I was like, yeah. we can do it. And then when you watch it, you're going to be like, you suck. And I'm like, no, I don't suck. You didn't give me any time or any money to do it with. Yeah, yeah. You're like, you wanted me to make Star Wars, and you're giving me $75 in three days. You know, it's like, <laughs> like what did you, you expect, man? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, I'm like tying thread to little old Star Trek, you know. <laughs> And, you know, I, I have the same issue myself. I was talking about that with my show lead today. You know, my one of my biggest issues is, and I've, I've started to get over it as a crew lead, um, delegation. Like, because, I mean, you know me, man. That word. Yeah, yeah, like, you, you know me. Like, <laughs> yeah. I want my hands in it, man. I want to yeah. be up in the mix. I want to be doing that. And, you know, like you were saying, there, you give yourself a certain skill set. And, you know, like I get asked all the time, can you program DMX boards? I'm like, no, but I have six people that can. Yeah. Because at some point, you have to figure out the skills that you're trying to hone and hone yeah. those. And then just be, you have to go with the Bill Gates and the, you know, the Apple model, uh, the Steve Jobs model of surround yourself with the geniuses that will make it happen. Yeah. You know, and, and lean on them, push them to make it happen. Um, and that's really what you have to learn to do. You have to learn to delegate the authority, delegate the responsibility. And it does take a lot whenever you're the one that's doing the passion project, whenever you're yeah. the one that's doing it to relinquish that. Or if you're the one responsible yeah. for, the, for the final product. Yeah, yeah it's tough. Yeah, yeah. To, to relinquish that and be like, and be the one that takes the hit if something does go bad. Yeah. Still. Um, now, what is that for you to, how, how do you go about, um, finding the talent that you need crew wise, things like that. What, what are you looking for? Let's say in an audio recorders. I have one. I'm, just kidding. <laughs> I, I'm not here for an interview. Well, I am here for an interview, but not a job interview job. Uh, but like, one, if you were out looking, Hi, James. <laughs> Hey, buddy. Uh, <laughs> you need to come be in a talking sound podcast, James. Um, but you know, like. If, if somebody was going out, uh, let's say that they've done a little bit of studio work, things like that, they've been a live rock and roll guy, and they want to transfer into film, what are some of the skill sets that a director like you or a producer like you is looking for for that recordist on set? I mean, obviously there, there's skills that are related to audio recording. There's skills that are related to an employer, a typical employee. Yeah. Uh, you know, where, the way that I work and the projects that I go on, we, we have a very uh, pretty tight knit group, and uh, you know, I like a family environment. So mm -hmm. uh, they've got a mesh. And a lot of times, a lot of times, it's like you're really good, but I don't know if I'm going to work with you. You're really you're abrasive, yeah. not you, but you know, yeah. I find people that are abrasive, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know if you're going to be a good fit. And sometimes we bring people on the sets, and we have that problem. You're just like, yeah, you, you're great, but I, I don't know. Yeah. This is this is enough. It's not meshing. Not, yeah. We went out a few times, but I don't think we should be getting married. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and then um, skill-wise, you know, I mean, it's pretty simple. A lot of times I with my sound, uh, same thing with camera, I'm looking for guys that have their own equipment mm -hmm. because they're usually familiar with their own equipment. Exactly. And I'm not like, okay, have you ever worked with this camera? They're like, no. And I'm like, all right, well, not only do I want you to figure out my movie, I want you to learn to use this camera. Yeah. They're not that different, and I get it, and, you know, yeah. good cinematographers can pick something up pretty fast, but a lot of times I'm looking for guys with their own equipment, looking for guys that, you know, a boom guy, they can, they can hold a boom all day, can they get clean sound, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it's really hard to explain until I see it, and a lot of times, yeah. again, I, re I listen to a lot of the guys around me, like my cinematographers, they shoot a lot more than I do, yeah. they're on set a lot more, a lot of times if I'm in a, if I'm in a city where I don't know if I don't know people, I'll ask. I'll be like, "Who's who's, who's good this, around town?" Yeah, who's who's your sound guy? Yeah, you know, or who do you want, or do you have a particular sound guy you want to work with? Or I listen. You know, I have a couple DPs that I really like working with, and I'll go to them, and they'll tell me. They'll be like, uh, "Hey, 
we're not getting good sound. And then, you know, the audio guy would be like, oh, no, I'm getting great sound. And he'll just look at me and I'm like, no, you're not. And there are people I trust, you know, you know yeah. and I'll, I'll take their word for it. And, and I'll usually pull the sound and I'll be like, oh, yeah, it's not very good. Yeah. Oh, okay, now how do we fix this? You yeah. Know? So where's Reshoot? that sound guy that you told me to hire? And I didn't, a- you know. ADR is how you fix it? You know what? I've, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, I, I'd say that, but, you know, in the, in the, indie, in the small budget indie world, a lot of times there's not funding for ADR. Yeah. And if there is, it's very minimal, and you don't you don't want to have have to do that. You spend a lot more time. You spend money. You spend a lot more time. You and you got to go back and remix all that, and then it puts more work on the editor, and that's more money yeah. there. And it's you know more time and more money and more yep. time and more money, and it's like you know it's like okay, this isn't a little budget film anymore. Yeah. You know now, granted, I'd love to be working on ten, fifteen, twenty million dollar films, or even you know six, seven, eight hundred thousand, two million dollar films, yeah. but the fact is, those things don't change in the in that world. There's a little bit of money for ADR and things like that, but everybody else's salary goes up. There's really not there's not room for for. I always say there's not room for for human error. You know, there's going to be mistakes are going to get made. Yeah, things are going to happen. If we can get rid of the human error and, and the mistakes that we could prevent, then we yeah. need to, we need to. Well, do yeah, that. minimalize the damage as yeah. much as you can. You know, generator is going to blow up. It, it, yeah. yeah, it's going to get a leak. The It's going to say it's going to be sunny for all day and then we're going to get a rainstorm. Yeah. Things are going to happen that are going to cause us to lose time and money, so we have to minimize our mistakes. And that's what I always say. And we always do that with a lot, lots and lots of pre-production. That's my big thing is let's, yeah. let's spend the time, let's yeah. plot it out, redundant graphs and charts and lists yeah. that you know, half the people don't read. But then I can at least go to him and go, look, six weeks ago I gave you this. Why are you telling me you didn't have this ready? Yeah. You know? where, where are we at? What's wrong? So. And it, now, for you, um, what, what is probably your favorite part of production? Other than the final product. I don't know if that's my favorite part or not. <laughs> um, being on set. I always tell people by the time I get to set, and there's... Yeah, that's the chaos. But by the time I get to set, that's like a vacation. Like I spend 18, 20 hours a day literally at a desk working, prepping, doing casting and crewing and, you know, contracts and insurance and, blah, blah, you know, da, 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 budget, all that stuff so that we can go to set and make a movie. Yeah. And that's the fun part. Like once we get to set, I'm just like, man, this is, this is it. We're here. We're doing it. We're we're going to shoot a movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's when we get to that point, that's, yeah, that's the fun part. Nice. Shooting nice. it. Yeah. Even if the vinyl product, I probably don't like as much as shooting it. I mean, I love, obviously love to see the vinyl product, but the, the, the shooting is when everybody's together and, and like all, all this planning that you've done is, is going, is going on. You know, and that, that's the beauty of you. Like, you sit back and you can watch and everybody's, like, doing their thing. And you're just like, yeah. Just the, watching the dance happen. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, now now as I get more into directing, um, I feel the same way. Because it's like planning and working with actors and, and you know, working with scripts and, and getting everything to a point. And then you get, to sh- you get to go to set and you start shooting and you're like, here it is. There's all the planning put into work. Yeah. The final product's just kind of like, it's like going to a wedding. You know, the wedding's the fun part. You look at the pictures, you're like, oh, man, we had a good time. But for me, like when I watch a movie, I'm like, ah, oh, look at that. I, sh- I knew I shouldn't have done it that way. You know, so yeah, watching the final product is, is probably a little nerve-wracking sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I'll watch it. By the time it gets, by the time like, the film actually gets done, I've probably seen it 2,000 times. Yeah, you know, between dailies and yeah, everything else. I watched else. it over and over. Of course, I was I watched it in my head as we were shooting it, you know, and I'm just like, I, by the time it's over, I'm like, I'm done with this. Yeah. <laughs> like, you want to watch it again? I'm like, no. <laughs> First time was good. I'll come back in a decade. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. But I, I do. Yeah. I, I'll, I will watch my films. But, uh, yeah, the final products on here is much fun as the actual making of the film. Now, Seymour Films has been around for eight years. Um, how many productions have y'all put out? Productions? Just, well, yeah, like how many How many projects have y'all been a part of, been, you know? About 50. Wow. 
That's fantastic. Something like that, fifty-ish. That's that's a yeah. good number considering yeah. considering the time that it takes to shoot a movie, plan a movie, yeah. even even a short film. You know, even even a five ten minute short. You know, you're looking at a good amount of pre production. Yeah. Everything else. Yeah, I, I think I've done. I've produced as a, I've been a producer on I think twenty two films. I've directed. Including TV, including episodes. I don't, I don't even know. Actually, probably more than that. That's how you want to break them down. Because, like, you know, we just did 18 episodes of a series. Mm -hmm. You know, I consider that one. But some people may consider that 18. I don't know. Yeah, so yeah. it's hard to say. I, mean, I bet you that the editor would consider that 18. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she loves me. <laughs> but, you know, I, 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 I joke but I call I call her up and I'm just like, I know you're going to hate me. That's how I start every conversation. <laughs> So can so we do this to... one more time? She's she's amazing. Uh, I, I met I met Karen when she was just yeah, either just finishing college or had maybe still had a year left, um, and then she moved out to L.A. a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. uh, and we connected when I moved out here. I told her I was contacted her. And I told her I was moving out here, and I was like, I'm, I'd really like to connect with you and start working. And she's done all my work since I've been out here, and just just love working with her. She's amazing. Now. As far as acting, things like that. Um, yes, I act. Yes, he does. He's fantastic. Um, this is not an act right now. But, <laughs> but how hard is it to find the actor for the part? Because, I mean, some people say, you know, you see, you see the person that's just like, bam, shining light behind them, you know, like light at the end of a tunnel, this is the person. Does it happen that way, or is it, really, is it really more painstaking? Sometimes it happens that way. Uh, I've definitely seen that. Like somebody walked in the room, and by the time they finished introducing themselves, I was like, "That's so that's the guy I want for that role." And um, and yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> that um, um, casting is one of my favorite favorite parts of filmmaking. Like as far as the pre-production goes, mm -hmm. that's one of my favorite things is working with actors. You know, and it's a combination of again. Can I work with them? Uh, are they are they are they talented? Do I think they have the talent? Mm -hmm. um, do they get me? Like, do they get my direction in the way that I work? Or you know, some people I've, I've talked to, they're like, I don't get what you're saying. I, I don't know what you mean. You just yeah, the communication. Yeah, just what the translation of line and emotion. Yeah, it just doesn't it doesn't yeah. hit. And um, uh, and then also they've got to fit the part compared to the other people playing the other roles. Yeah. You know, you find somebody, um, I had that happen I had not, not too long ago, where the two actors, I thought we were both good for the roles, but together they just... The, the chemistry just didn't yeah, click. It just wasn't there. And it, you could feel it. You could feel that. And um, it's a shame because you're like, everybody suffers. Yeah. You know, everybody suffers because of that. And their work suffered because of it. And yet... That was my fault because I was in the cast. Of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, and that that's a big that's a big change to the morale, Gertz. Yeah, right. but you but you learn. You know those things. Yeah. You like you. All right, so that didn't work. Um, so you start. You I mean, it's like everything else. You learn as, as you go along. Uh, now I've I've gotten pretty good at casting. I can, uh, you know, I can spot talent. I think pretty well. I also. Uh, I also watch. I, I use a lot of the same actors over and over. Mm -hmm. um, uh, also, I also keep an eye on people. Like if I see somebody, I'm like, ah, it's not quite there. I had that happen in the on the film I did recently, where I called an actor. It was the first time I had, I'd used her, but it, I'd seen her audition for years, mm -hmm. and it seen such a vast improvement from the first time I saw her audition till the last time I saw her, till I saw her on set. Just yeah, you know, I was like, wow, this person's really really working like really doing work really crafting themselves. yeah they're putting themselves in the work they're not just resting on oh i'm getting roles and people are people are casting me they're, that wasn't enough they, you know you love to see people like that because you're like great yeah this can this person they're very young they're going to continue to improve and it's like can't wait to work with them well, it, you know? it's just like me it's the same thing with techs like i like working with hungry techs man i like yeah. working with people that are thirsting for knowledge that want to learn more that want to expound upon themselves and their craft. Yeah. 
And what would you say yourself from beginning to now, what would you say you have grown with the most in your craft as producer director? What have I grown most in? Patience. Uh, no, I mean, I was, I think I'm a lot more patient than I used to be in, um, letting things develop. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, I've gotten stronger in so, I mean, so many aspects of it. I mean, I, I didn't direct for a long time because I wanted to get on sets and I wanted to work with actors and I wanted to act in films. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, I wanted to get a feeling of what. Well, the pulse on what's happening well, around it. Not only that, but I wanted to get a feeling of what the um, what directing at this level. When I say this level, it's I mean we do low budget indie stuff. So mm -hmm. I wanted to get an idea of what was lacking, where I was like, what what could I be as a director that I wasn't getting or seeing as, as an, an actor. actor, as an actor or as a producer. Uh, you know, I, I, I've sat on films as a producer and watched directors, and it was like... And you've worked with some good directors. Some, yeah. And But at the same time, I, you know, and I've worked with, with good actors, and I've watched both not get... Uh, both as an actor and as a, as a producer, I've watched some actors not get... Or some directors, excuse me, not get... Not... What's the word I'm looking for? Not um, not connecting with their actors. Yeah. In a way that I felt helped the actors. Yeah, like not understanding their process. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah, and every act if some actors are, you know, very different. You know, some some you could just say a word. Uh, I have an actor that I've worked with several times, uh, he's a great friend. Uh, who? Sal Rendino. I've worked with him since early on. Um, he came to an open audition I did in New York, my first open audition in New York City. I just was like, I'm going to do an audition. I'm going to do a casting call in, in New York City. Open call. I just just want to do it. I just want to get in there and, and do that. And Sal showed up and Sal had a, you know, Sal's had a decent career. He's had a good career. Um, he's doing a lot of television work now. And uh, he came in and uh, really liked him. I uh, ended up casting him in Tangled 8. Mm -hmm. And then, oh God, I don't even know how many times I've cast him since then. Um, but now it's to the point where I feel like I can look at Sal and like I can yell cut. I'll look up at Sal and I'll go, hey, and he'll go, oh, that? And I go, yeah. You know, yeah, we don't even just like... It's, it's the unspoken like language. He knows what I want and he knows he didn't do it or he knows, like he just, he just look at me and I go, and he'll go, mm-hmm, got yeah. it. You know, and... Roll again. You can't, you can't, that only comes with working people or whatever. But yeah. there are some people that you can... You know that you can do that with, and then some others. You need to really get them in their place. Me, as an actor, if I have to do a really emotional scene, I really need to kind of separate myself, and I really have to get into it. Yeah, and then get a little method with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because I'm not a, I'm not a well seasoned actor. I'm not a well. I'm not a, I don't have a lot of training. Yeah. So it takes me a little while to get there. I can get there, and I feel like I can do a pretty decent job. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I have to have that, so I recognize that some other actors need that. Yeah. Some don't. Some can be like joking and then stop on a dime and turn and just, you know. And I'm like, that's just, awesome. Just, just like emotion. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> how do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> just like, turn it on like a faucet. But everybody, but everybody's different. Some people need, you know, some people, some people need reassurance. Some people don't. Some, some people, people don't care. Some people need a couple rough takes before you do a real yeah, take. Sometimes you, know. you know, sometimes you get to narrow it and do you know forty, fifty takes, and we'll get one of those right. And, yeah, you know, some, combine three or four of them together to make the scene. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, whatever works. But thank you once again, editor. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's everybody's different, and what I saw um, before I started directing was like. You know, I, I took a lot of notes, so when I'll, I'd go home and, and make notes about what I wanted to be as a director, and obviously, I, you know, I read books on directing and, mm -hmm. you know, looked up some of the people that I admire um, and, you know, did research on how they direct. Uh, sometimes that worked and sometimes it didn't, because sometimes I was like, no, oh, it's not at all what... Well, it's not you. Yeah, it's not yeah. me. But it, but it was good to understand how other people approach. Yeah, to conceptualize it. And that's what I wanted to, you know, I, I, I really try to connect with my actors. I'm not a techie guy. I'm not really good with cinematography. I, you know, 
Well, that's what your DP is for. Right. I let I let everybody else do their job. I try to bring in the best people I can and let everybody else do their job without too much interference from me. Obviously, we talk. We have a plan. We know we, we know stylistically what we want. Yeah. Same thing with my editor. I don't sit over my editor and be like, oh, this, this, this. I'm like, you know what I like. Put me a rough draft together. If I don't like something, I'll give you notes. I'll give you notes. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm taking notes all along while we're shooting. So she kind of knows what I like. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I like sure. that scene. I don't like that. You know, that's what script soups are for. So um, I really try to spend my time connecting with my actors and getting a feel. And I like to, I like to, I like my actors to have a lot of, a lot of room. Obviously, we have we have to we have we have to tell a story, and it's my story to tell. I'm the director. Sure. Um, I was hired to to tell the story to bring the story to life. So I've got a vision of how I want it to go. But you know, I try to give actors as much freedom as they can. And a lot of times, I can tell what I want from an actor just by that. Mm -hmm. Like I'll get some actors, and I'll start working with them, and I'll talk to them, and I can feel that they're not getting it. They're not getting into it. Yeah. And I'm like, they just start seeing the angle. Well, no, they're just they're just not putting the work in. Mm. You know, like you know, whatever. You know, I got this. Yeah. I'm like, nah, it's not gonna work for me. I, I wanna, I wanna, I want you to, I want you to be invested. Push in this. it a little bit. Yeah, I want yeah. you to be invested in this because it, it needs to be something for everybody. You know, it's part of a team. Um, and I think I've had pretty good success with that. I, I really enjoy directing. I, that's what I going forward. That's what I want to do. I'll keep producing because. Well, my phone keeps ringing and people offer to pay money to produce. <laughs> it's a, yeah, so I'm going to keep it. You're not pay your rent. I'm, I'm yeah. going to take that and I'm going to do it. Um, but down the line, I'd really love to direct. I want to do a little more acting. Um, I promise I'll shave. Um, when the time comes. The even got my hair. But uh, what I won't take off the hat. That's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, uh, um, yeah, moving forward, I, I really want to direct. I really enjoy... The interaction with actors and watching talented people that are as passionate about what they do as I am about what I do. Yeah. That's that I enjoy. Like yeah. working with actors and letting them, you know, explore and find things in their characters. Um, yeah, it's just fun, you know? Yeah. Now, whenever you're shopping, it, it, what, it, explain to the audience and to, Upcoming filmmakers, what shopping the script is all about? I have no idea. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I write a lot, quite a bit. Um, shopping, shopping a script. I mean, there's there's different ways you can shop a script. But typically, what I'm doing at this point is trying to find investors. Um, I mean, I, we went to the American film market. We shop we shot some scripts to distributors. I actually had one or two. Uh, that, are, that are looking at a script that I wrote um, <clears throat> this last year. So um, typically what I, what I try to do is take the film out to investors and see if I can find somebody that's interested in, in the product and what, you know, what I'm trying to produce. Um, that's, that usually means there's a script and there's a business plan or a Bible, you know, which tells you a lot about the, fi the financial side of it, yep. uh, the budget, who we're thinking about for cast? Uh, there's a lot of details in that. Uh, well, sometimes it's it, sometimes it's three or four pages. Sometimes it's sixty pages. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Well, and that and that's just it. Like, is is it kind of like a resume for the film, or is it like a, a press packet? You know, uh, yeah, press packet's yeah. probably the closest akin to it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this it's, is it's this is what it's about. This is the budget that we're looking for. It's this a is business the theme. Plan. Yeah. It's a business plan is what it is okay. for, for the film. Yeah, comparables. Um, you know, what other films are like this? What are the films are in this budget range like this? How did those films do? What's different about this? What's this alike? Where are you going to go with this film? What's, mm -hmm. your, what's your distribution plan? What's your what's your contingency plan if you, that, that distribution plan doesn't work? Um, yeah. So, th yeah, there's a lot of detail. Like I say, it's upwards of 50 pages. Um, and that's... That's what I started out doing, was writing business plans for that. Because it wow. was something I had experience in. Hey, you've got a knack for it. Yeah, I mean, we did that. You know, I'd done that for a nonprofit or yeah. two nonprofits. Um, and I'd done it for a couple of businesses, a handful of businesses, including our marketing company. So I had some experience in writing business plans. So I took that 
basic structure and started and then caused, uh, went out and got business plans from as many movies as I could and read them and figured out. And it's like, okay, here's what we need. Yeah. And, and, of course, a lot of the questions come when you start talking to investors. They're like, well, I want to know this, 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 and this. Okay, great. Now I know what to put in my business plan for you. <laughs> now I know what to come now to I know what you with want. next time. Now I know what you want. And, and is it something that whenever you're going to certain investors that you're going to craft some of that in a different way? Or is sure. it one thing that you put together and send out to everybody? It's typically one thing that I would send out to everybody. Um, but I usually um, either include some sort of uh, letter or a phone call or something that says, you know, hey, if there's other information you want or, yeah. or need me to expand or explain on, on any of these topics, obviously I'm available to do yeah. that. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of times it, it's all up to the investor. You know, if it's a, a vanity investor that's like, man, I don't care about this thing. I just want, I just want to be able to put my name on it. I want to be able to invite people over to my house and show executive producer, Joe Smith, yeah. whatever. I'm like, all right, so really what you care about is who the cast is. You know, and they're we carried have, about and the we names and the attachments. Yeah, I mean, obviously, that's great. You're gonna you're gonna fall in love with that, and then of course you're gonna bring a lawyer in and <laughs> an accountant in. So I've got to have a good budget to go with that, and you got to know that those you know those numbers all work. Uh, that was one of the hardest things to do to do was learn budgeting. Yeah, yeah, budgeting. And there's you know, who knew there was software. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, you know, when I first started out, we didn't we didn't use software of any kind. We did everything from scratch, um, and you know, as much as I want to strangle some people now <laughs> because of it, I literally don't know what was more what could be more valuable than being able to to do all that by hand. Like I can I can literally read a script now and probably tell you within a very small range what the budget needs to be nice you know and uh, i remember we were sitting around a table and uh this was pretty early on and uh, a rap artist was on the speakerphone we're all in the room talking uh, and he comes to the thing and they're they were doing some sort of thing on the budget software and they were talking and they got to the end and I'm sitting there and listening to the whole thing and I haven't said a word and I'm just listening he's in they're asking all their questions and people he's like uh I said, so what do you think? So he's on the rapper talks and he's talking through this speakerphone. He goes, so what do you think that's going to cost? And I'm like, $65,000. And the guy looked at me at the table and he goes, we had sixty-two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. He goes, how did you do that? <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, that's what I do. And yeah. he's like, they're like, that's pretty impressive. I was like, because I, as he was going with it, I was just like, in my head, I was just like, to, Tally it up. I, I add really well in my head, yeah. so I was like, "Yeah, I got." It. So, you know, it's such a brag. It's just that I I learned it without throwing in all the numbers, and I just naturally add in like yeah. taxes and contingencies and, and things yeah. like that and uh, uh, fringe. And so when we get to the end, I'm like, "Oh, I, yeah, I got that." Now the ballpark, it I was off by twenty five hundred dollars, but I was like, "I'll I'll take that." Yeah, yeah. that's a, that's all right. I need that. you forgot my fee. <laughs> Now, when you're out in the field, when you're out on location shooting, uh, what is the most challenging thing for you on set? Uh, style versus budget. Style versus time. Okay. Um, how do we get everything we need? And yet, you know, a lot of times... I mean, we'll shoot and like we'll based on the budget that we have and what we can afford to get away with, we'll have nine pages of film scheduled in a day, which is you know it's a page of, a page is about equivalent to a minute of film. So you get mm -hmm. about nine minutes of film a day. Yeah. Uh, on a huge Hollywood feature, you might do half a page a day. You know, so it's it's managing your time efficiently and still getting the work done or managing your time to get the work done that you have to get done to stay on schedule and yet not giving up the artistry, not giving your, you know, you've got to give your actors enough time. So they, they make mistakes. They get, you know, whatever. And something happens, you know, 
you know, who knows what happens, but some that they, they get a little off and they, they need some time. Yeah. The director's not happy with something. Lighting's not right. The, the set's not done right. Something. So you have, you have to, again, we plan, 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 plan to make sure that we are ready. You know, yeah. I usually send out this letter right before we start, right before everybody comes to set, and it's this really ominous letter. It's like, you don't understand what I mean when I say we're going to go really fast. And I've gotten, I've gotten to better where I just don't schedule nine pages a day. I schedule six, you know, and that, that's for everybody. That's good for everybody. Yeah. Um, but in the end, it's like, you don't know how fast we're going to move. You don't know if we're not really going to move that fast. Like, you have to be ready. You have to be ready. You have to know your lines. You have to know what you want. You have to know your role. You have to know what the sets look like. You can't, we don't have time for you to ask questions. That's why all this information is here for you. Yeah. That, You've put all this together. It's all there. Look at it beforehand. Don't come to sit and go, oh, I didn't know I needed to bring a screwdriver. Obviously, they bring screwdrivers, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, and we just can't have, again, we can't have those kind of mistakes. Yep. So that's always the hardest part is like making sure we're getting the, the pages in that we have, to, the filming that we have to get done and yet allowing the... The talent, I hate to use that word, but the the people in front of the camera to be able to to, to provide the performance that they know they can perform, that yeah. they can provide. Um, and sometimes it's just telling an actor, no, you're good. Because yeah. actors are, are perfectionists sometimes. Not yeah. all of them, but some, some of them are. And they're like, oh, let me do it again. Let me do it again. Let me do it again. I'm like, we got it. Yeah. You could do it 20 more times. I'm using that yeah. take. Because yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I one. wanted. Yeah, and that's, that's the one. That's when I come to, when I tell people, it's like, okay, I've given you your room to explore. That was what I want for the film that I'm making. Yeah. So I don't need you to do any more. Yeah. You know, that's frustrating to some actors. But, you know, I, I try to go back to them. I go, look, you got it. I, I know you don't think you gave me what I needed, but I can promise you, I got what I needed or we'd do it again. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, me and you are the ones that are going to suffer because they're going to be like, that director and actor don't yeah. Doing. Yeah. So, so yeah, we try to make sure that we get that right. But that's that's always the hard part is, is uh, find the balance of those two. Absolutely, man. It's it's like that in it, just about any creative industry. Sure. You're trying to trying to find that delicate balance and do that dance around things and make sure that the infrastructure is set up so that any production goes off well. Whether whether it's rock and roll, theater, film, television. Yeah. What have you. You have to make sure that the infrastructure, the people are in place to support each other and come out with the end result. That's what terrifies me and excites me about live theater. Yeah. Is that, you know, there's no balance. There is like, no. There it is. Yeah. And then, well, it's, <laughs> it's just yeah, like, it's like in my, the, the, yeah. the, the going phrase in my live production industry is you're only as good as your last gig. Yeah. Because, like, I work with people like Michael Dell. Yeah. You know, like I was telling you earlier, one of the last shows I worked in Austin, I had the CTO from Tesla Motors up on my stage. And buddy, if his, like the lady that was sitting right there with me that was, you know, in charge of the show and, you know, calling shots for us, telling us who's coming up next, went to go charge her phone on the computer that he's doing his presentation from. And in the middle of it, it goes, doom, dink, and he's like, somebody just plugged something into my computer? <laughs> And it's like, can't take that back. That's out there now. That's on the record. That yeah. sounds on the record. Can't take that back. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's rough. You know, like, the, that's a kick to the pride nerds whenever I'm sitting there mixing video and I've got my comm set on and she starts doing that. And it's like, you just jacked up my record, man, with the CTO at Tesla Motors. It's not you that he's looking at. It's me. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah, yeah, to to get to that point where those things go off well, where everything's properly planned and it just goes off like a match. It's it's a beautiful thing when it happens. Yeah. Um for you starting out the way you did and being where you're at now, what would be your let's just say your five pointers for an up and coming producer director? For someone that's wanting to step their foot into the industry, what what would you say would be the five things that they need to really consider and strengthen themselves on? 
Um, number one, be a good worker. The biggest thing I look for in the film industry period is people that show up and work. Even if you don't know what the hell you're doing, if you'll show up every day on time, and you know, if you're the first one there and the last one to leave, I'll find a place for you. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll create a place for you. I'll I've Same taken people here. on sets that I'm like, man, they've yeah. never been on a set before. I've taken yeah. people that literally had never been on a film set, and I've trained over, I've had over 50 interns through the years, and in the, eight, in the nine years I've been in the business, and. You know, all I'm looking for is that people are going to sh show up and work. That's just show up and work. That's all you got to do. Um, number two, get on as many film sets and learn as much as you can. That was that was the hardest part for me. Is I never I never PA'd. Yeah, I I have yeah. as a producer, <laughs> but uh, you know I've done much PA work as a producer, a grip and everything else. But um, I never had a chance to learn that stuff. And I always tell people, get on sets. Get on sets. Get, get hands-on experience. Get hands-on experience. And when you're not on hands-on experience, read, learn. You know, there's thousands of books on stuff out there. Learn as much about as many areas of filmmaking as you can. Um, you don't learn anything. You don't learn how to make movies from books, but you learn things in books that that are valuable. Uh, ideas and theories and you know, just lingo. You know, yeah. there's things that you learn that that need to that you need to have um read scripts you know people come up to me and they go this script's really good and i'm like how many scripts you've read and they go 10 i'm like this script's garbage you need to read thousand like literally i read scripts i read that is your reading yeah <laughs> well you know me i have yeah, a library you're a, and I've you're read, a voracious reader man like I, the same way you watch films is how you read books i you know but I don't read books anymore. I read films. I yep. read scripts. And I, I read hundreds a month. Yep. And uh, when, I'm, when I don't read in scripts, I read in, um, you know, I read in query letters, you know, and, and, and synopses and things like that. Uh, and, you know, I can tell where my synopsis of a book's in. By the, way the, by the way the synopsis is written, I can tell the script's good, you know, now because I've done it so much and I can tell the script's going to work. Um, and then you need to learn about the you learn about the industry. Read the trades. Read read what's going on. Uh, a lot of stuff that even I like. I'm always like, man, I need more time to read more things. You know, more about what's going on. People ask me that stuff. I'm like, oh, I miss that. Yeah. Just, you just have to figure out. You know, there's a <laughs> there's a limit to how much you can do. Yeah. Physically. Um, so learn as much as you can about film. Get on as many sets as you can. Learn as, read as many scripts as you can. Read as many books about filmmaking as you can. Get as much knowledge as you can. It's great if you can go to school, but if you can't, you know, get on the sets and learn the stuff. Um, all right, so that's two points. I'm supposed to have five. Um, but, we can consider that three. Yeah, we'll consider that three. Right. Three and a half. There were, there were a few in there. So three and a half. There were a few in there. Number three and a half would be, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, like with anything, listen a lot more than you talk when you get on set. You know, learn learn from things. Learn how to, um, learn, yeah, learn how to listen. Because a lot of, I learned a lot from just sitting back and listening. Uh, you know, I, I hear, I listen and I pay attention and I try to learn from, from what's going on. Um, so don't just go to the sets and, and do the work. Pay attention to what's going on around you. That doesn't mean be nosy and ask a ton of questions. But listen, people will let you know what you're doing. Um, you know, and just go in with the with the mindset of like I'm trying to learn. You know. Um, mm -hmm. um, final word. Final one. Man, it's like a gauntlet. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, get it. Day job. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Get a day job. Maintain that day job Maintain for at least a little while, long man. Long <laughs> yeah, I mean, be prepared to, you know, to take risks. Yes. Uh, this is a, you know, 
get outside your comfort zone and you know do that. That's just a that's a life lesson, man. Yeah, you it know, is. you you and I both had had similar experience. We you know, went to college together and um, both both spent a semester abroad and have traveled a lot. And you know, getting outside. I mean, just outside. I'm I'm a I grew up in southern Arkansas. I'd never, you know, I'd never been <laughs> nothing. Then they threw me in Rome, you know, and I was yeah. like, what? <laughs> yeah. But I learned, you know, I learned a ton about life, and I learned a lot about what was out there and available. And you, like I said, you had Absolutely. the same experience. And, you know, nothing, I have really thick skin, and nothing phases me, you yeah. know. And I'm... I'm I developed patience, which early in my life is not something I really had. Neither did I. Neither yeah. did I, man. It but, took uh, me until 35 to get there. <laughs> and I don't know if I was there yet, but, uh, you know, I, I developed patience. And, but also just like, I, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty adaptable to anything. Like you can't, you can't really, you can't really fluster me too yeah. much. They're like, okay, next week you're going to have to go live on a park bench. And I'm like, all right, cool. Can I, get, can I can I bring like it? Is it, a, is it a metal or wood park? Bench? Yeah, is it a metal or wood? And is, is there be... a bus stop at this park bench? <laughs> can I bring a Can I bring a bottle to pee in? You know, yeah. you know, it's like so I don't get arrested. You know, yeah. or would that get? Can I wear a trench coat so I can? You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's true. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I can adapt. Just just tell me what's going on, and I'll figure I'll figure out a way to adapt it. And if you can be adaptable, uh, if you can be adaptable and work hard and 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 learn. And be willing to learn all the time. Man, I'm going to learn something every time I'm on set. And that's yeah. another reason I love being on set. Because I always learn something. Yes. And I just, you know, I take, take it. I stick it that, that's it. Right, there it is. Pocket. One more. Put it in your back pocket. And it's right there to draw on when you need it. And it's funny because earlier I was telling you about the technician I've been working with this week who gambles on the side and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Just craps. And it was funny because, number one... Buddy, walking out into the street is a freaking gamble. Just leaving your house is a gamble to begin. Waking up in the morning is a gamble. Much less... I don't know if that's a gamble. <laughs> Depending on your lifestyle, <laughs> buddy. Uh, but but seriously, to, to do what we do, we talk a lot about living life through our passions, being passionate about life, being passionate about living. And to do what we do, to go out, you know, you, as long as I've known you, and like I said at the beginning of the show, I'm 40 now, I've known you since I was 18, as long as I've known you, John, you've been an idea guy, you've been someone who's been a dreamer, you've been someone who's had huge plans, whether or not they come to fruition, you put the effort in to try, right? and that in and of itself is the success, you yeah. tried, yeah. and to, to start a small business, to start a film company, to do a film in and of itself to begin with, with all the parts and cogs that it makes to make the clock tell the time, is a gamble. Sure. And you have to be willing to roll the dice. Oh, you yeah. have to be willing to put your money on the table. You have to be willing to lay down to do it. And that, that I think, is probably the biggest hurdle that people have to get over, is that initial plunge even even my oh, wife yeah. amy um it was a point of contention for a little while whenever i whenever we moved in together before i got married because i, I do a lot of corporate av work things like that she had a steady full-time job and was teaching at her theater part-time but it, it would blow her mind that i would go in in three days make what she make in a week right and it's like oh well, maybe you know it's the difference between the guy that comes in and puts puts up the wall framing in your house and the dude that comes in and does the finishing woodwork. The finishing woodwork guy is skilled labor. He's going to get paid more than the guy that built right. built the inside of the wall. And you really do have to put yourself in the situation of learning those skills. You have to, like I said before, surround yourself with the people that have those skills and learn as much as you can, absorb as much as you can. Get to know them so that you have their network to lean on. Right. Um, and like now she is full time with her theater and literally just before Christmas um, started back with her temp agency. Mind blowingly enough. So she could get perspective again. Right. Because it, it, it's a mind trip, man. Whenever it actually happens and you're doing what you want every day. Is this really the way it is? Yeah. Like, is this really happening right now? Yeah. Like, it's yeah. it's almost like it's surreal sometimes, you know. And to, like, she went out and started doing temp work again just so she could gain perspective and appreciate what she was doing fully again. 
Because, yeah. you know, sometimes you can lose that appreciation. I get jaded sometimes. You know, sometimes I, I look around and I'm like, hell am I so curmudgeon man? Like, I'm getting paid to play with people's expensive toys all day. <laughs> Why the hell am I having this attitude today? Like, what is wrong with me? Right. There are people who would kill to be in my position. Yeah. You know, and it's hard not to lose that perspective. What do you do to keep yourself in check with that? Man. I don't know when you were talking, it made me think of a couple more things I had. Go ahead. Yeah. But I'll give bring them, no, bring them up. Uh, I think another thing that's that's really helpful. I, I do want to answer your question. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to avoid it. Uh, <laughs> Come back around, circle around. Uh, another thing is, you know, try to get some experiences. You know, again, you and I both had had the very fortunate experience of being able to travel mm -hmm. through school, but that was the start. You know, after that, I, I traveled a lot. You know, it's a drug. When the military, <laughs> yeah, it is. But in the military, I took you know three more trips back to Europe, backpacking, and uh, you know. Travel all over the U.S. Uh, I think I spent some time in Mexico from the pictures I was there. Mm. Uh, so you know, gain some experiences. You know, look at things. Try to try to see things from different ex different yeah. perspectives through different lenses. Yeah, and then uh, and be willing to to embrace some of those things. You probably don't know very much. Yeah. And that's yeah. yeah I, I look at life every day, and I probably don't know very much. I thought I knew it a hell of a lot when I was thirty, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I can whip your ass at trivia and pursuit, but I don't know very much. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know this. Oh yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but no, it's you know, it's it's just one of the things. There's a lot of different perspectives, and a lot of people look at things differently. Uh, you may agree with them, you may not agree with them, but you should have a good understanding of them. Yeah, like you should have a global perspective of how things are, and that people aren't one way or another, yeah. and that you don't have to agree with everybody. I can, I can assure you, I don't agree with the views of most not most anybody. Yeah, probably if you really got down to it, but that's not that's not a reason to not listen to what they had to say and, and to, see to yeah can, to just uh, dismiss them outright. Yeah, because I think that. That's also something that's really helpful when you when you go into a creative art because you're going to deal with people that are passionate about their lives. Yeah, uh, and so, about their end of the industry. Well, yeah, their end of the industry, but also about you know, things. I mean, you know, you always hear the, the jokes about artists and things, and the, the, the vegetarians and the say the animals, and you know, those are all good causes. Don't get me wrong; I went vegan for a while. I, I kick myself every day for not staying that way, and. Uh, I would kick myself if I could reach it. Yeah. God, I can't. <laughs> so i got to do that again. But, uh, you know, those are all good projects. And whether you agree with them or not, you should be open to the idea that other people do. Um, and that's really helpful when you when you get down to, to working with a group of artistic people. And sometimes you have to be a great, uh, you have to be a leader who can, who can uh, get people of different views to work together. And that's sometimes it's a matter of just, hey, let's not talk about that. Yeah. Here's a film set and we don't hey. talk about this. <laughs> yeah. We don't talk about politics and religion talk, here. Talking about something that we are going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about that here. Well, and that's just it. You know, even as a crew lead myself, you really do. Because, I mean, a lot of times I'll, I'll be going, you know, just like today, I came in, to, came in three days ago into Vegas. And, buddy, I'm working with crews I have never met. I've never talked with these people on the phone. We've never jibed. You know, we, we don't know what each other's vibe is. And you really do have to be, A, a quick judge of character. you got to be quick on your feet. And you got to be able to see the talent before you right now. Yeah. And be able to not micromanage, but delegate that talent where it needs to go to yeah. support the infrastructure to make the end goal happen. Yeah. You, like I said, you've got to... Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of working pieces, and you've got to be a, you've got to be a leader. You know, yeah. have to be able to, have, have to be able to lead. You know, and loyalty is important to me. I've always been a person that's, you know, I use the same a lot of the same actors, a lot of the same crew, mm -hmm. and I want that. If if it were if I had my way, it'd be tough because there's some people that I have double of. <laughs> but if I had my way, I'd probably just like be okay. You're gonna do these films, and you're gonna do these films. Yeah, just swap off. Uh, if I had my way, I'd use the same people every time. It's impossible. Can't use the same actors. Yes, yeah. you have different roles, yeah. different needs, um, you know. But there's a lot of uh, loyalty is very important to me. 
you know, on both sides, loyalty towards me and loyal, and I, I, I try to be loyal to the people that I work with. So yeah. that's that's always been you know, something that, that people should should be mindful of and, and yeah. respecting and, and helpful of people. And I, I, you know, I try to I try to foster that amongst even the, the people that I work with. And Absolutely, like, you guys should you should guys you, you guys should, should you guys should go hang out, have some coffee yeah. or something while we're on break, man. I, yeah. I did that last week. I sent a, an email to two really good friends in New York, and I said, you guys should actually do in L.A. I did that the week before. I said, you guys have worked together on films through me. And you, never even met. Yeah. Yeah. You guys should work together. You should, You guys should, should talk. Yeah. Um, you're both in New York. You're both in L.A. Uh, you're both super talented. You know, you're, you're going to work together again because next yeah. time I have a project in New York or L.A., I'm going to work with you. Yeah. So... You know, should work together outside of that and build each other up. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, exchange contacts. And I always try to, I always try to get people to do that. And I, I think we've been successful with that. You know, I think we, well, we, have, you know, been successful at building that kind of a film family. Yeah, and that's been important. As far as keeping, back to your question. I love it. As far I love, as love someone that studied philosophy, you can always bring it right <laughs> back around, man. Um, <laughs> you know. I can honestly say I have not lost perspective. And I don't, again, not trying to brag, but I literally wake up with like, man, I work in the movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I worked in sales and from time to time I'll go back and work in sales because I'm, I'm good at it. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been successful at it. Um, and I'll be like, I want to put some money together to make a movie. So I'll go work in sales and I'll make that money and I'll go shoot that film um, or do that project. Um, so I guess I get the opportunity to work in the, the world a little bit. Yeah. But I also look at it and I watch people struggle with their lives and things like that and then happy. And I'm just like, man, I, I never, ever, ever have that. But I also woke up like when I was 35 one day and, and I literally was like, okay, I either want to die or I want to do something I love. Yeah. I was like, I just cannot, cannot continue to do things that I don't care about. Yeah. And I was like, I don't care if I go broke. I don't care if I starve to death. I don't care if I end up in a ditch. I'm living I'm on a park bench. Yeah. <laughs> Spent very few nights on a park bench. One was in Sicily, so they're right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. That's a hard park bench in Sicily, Bob. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's a tough park. The, the police kept running us off. Yeah. But uh, uh, the uh, the idea of, of doing what I do just yeah, it just it's yeah, it's, it I gets you up in the morning, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd never, I'd never ever want to do anything else. I mean, if I won the lottery tomorrow, you would make more films. I'd make more films. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to pay off all the bills. I, I need all of my crew to move yeah. here to Vegas. It's like, I want to build I'm, a house. Yeah. I'm build a giant house. I'm building a compound. And we are going to work. That's it. I would. I would I would get up every morning and shoot films. I'd take, you know, two weeks off a year and go, well, I should probably make a little more than that. But Man, make, it a, make it a smooth month. Yeah. I'd take, I'd take a little time off and do some traveling. But mostly because I, I need some ideas about filming. But yeah, I literally would just do film. I was yeah. like, what would you do if you had a billion dollars? I was like, I'd make movies. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'd do. Yep. All of them. i take all those crazy ideas we, and I'm like, I'd sit down and go, ah, that's kind of stupid. I'd make that movie. Yep. <laughs> well, it's just like we were talking about that today with the, with the guy that gambles and everything else. We were talking about, uh, you know, going out and buying the Powerball tickets recently, you know, and stuff like that. And it's like, what happens if you win the Powerball? I will still be an AV technician because yeah. this is what I love. Yeah. You know, like. It's like, it, I, I, I just I just have to figure out what order I want to make the movies in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the same here. I just got to figure out which gear I want first now. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more. And final question here, John. It's a hard question to ask me. Even myself as an artist, uh, I've been asked it. I have 30-something hours of music on the Internet, and people have asked me, what was your favorite piece to write? It's a hard question to ask a proud papa. In your nine years in the industry... 50 plus productions that you've done. What has probably been the closest to the heart for you? Not your favorite. Right. No, but the closest that's, that's, to the heart. Very different question. 
Yeah. I mean... Because it is about passion. It is about what you love. And it's not necessarily about what you sell. It could even be something like, I have albums that I... I have 30 al- hours of music on the internet, not a single freaking track for sale. I don't yeah. care. People download it. Take it. That's what I made it for. It's art. Enjoy it. So... What what's been your favorite. what's been the classes closest to your heart? Not your favorite. Closest to closest to, to your heart, heart, man. The one that the one that whenever you think about it, you get that tingle in your belly, that warm fuzzy again. You know. Wow, that is a good question. Thank you. Man, they're all yeah. There's so many that, you know because they're so different. Yeah. You know, and that's just it. Like I said, it's hard for a proud papa to say that. It's hard for it's hard to. You know, it's like it's kind of like saying, "What's been your favorite moment here? What's been the closest heart moment in your heart in your son's life?" <laughs> you know, yeah. it's it's a hard question. Uh, I like hard questions. Hmm. I, mm, you know, I probably. I would probably say Tangled Eight, my feature, my first feature, for that very reason. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I put, that was all my own money. Was, everything was like, I am going to take this. Um, you know, Bryant wrote the short. Um, I did not friend, know that. Yeah, our friend. Wow. Um, and I went to cast that short film. We'd shot it once before. We were very unhappy with, with the final result. And I don't blame anybody but myself for that. We, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Yeah. You know, and I didn't, I didn't direct it. Um, but the final product just wasn't what we needed. Yeah. Um, so we scrapped it. Um, the, when I went back to shoot the short again, I wanted to redo it. And I did this casting call. And... As I was sitting there watching, because I didn't know how I wanted to do it. I didn't know if I wanted to do it as traditional, if I wanted to cast a couple as older or young. I didn't know what I wanted. So I was sitting there and watched all these people audition. And when it was done, at the end of the day, I remember because I had the girl that was doing, was doing the readings with me. And I was driving back home, and I looked at I just was driving, and I said to her, I said, you know what? I need to cast all of these people and I need to do this film over and over and over in different ways. And I said, that's what I really want to do because everybody that came in, you know, now, now I can pick up a script and I can read it and I can go, this is so-and-so, this is so-and-so. Like I know people Mm -hmm. that I've put in these roles and that's when I, as I read a script, that's what I do now. I start placing people, whether we can get them or not, I don't know. I mean, I'm not like Jennifer Aniston, Brad Pitt. You know, I'm not yeah. like, I'm like, oh, I know this guy. That's Sal. That's yeah. Sal. Like, that's, you know. Um, so when I, when I, when I was watching the auditions for Tangled Eight, I, I Tangled, I decided I was going to make this film eight times. And I was just going to do it eight different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and from there, just began this, this passionate piece that I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to create something that hadn't been done before Mm -hmm. Uh, and show, I mean, it was like, it was a study on film itself and that, you know, you can take this, these same words and craft them in all different ways and make them completely different and yet completely the same. Um, And I I mean, I did everything. I did everything myself up until the the very end. Um, You know, my DP did not show up, so my camera operator became my DP the night before. Wow. <laughs> Thank God. He was like, I packed up my car with the equipment because I just had a gut feeling in case something went, because we were way up in the middle of in the main woods. He said, if something went wrong, I'd have backup. So I said, okay, great. And uh, I was very fortunate that he was there uh, and ready to go. Uh, I lost... Also, one of the main crew members. So we, I mean, we were we were down under the gun, man. Yeah, one of the actresses did not show up. <laughs> um, so one of the producers on the project stepped in, 
Uh, we switched the schedule around to give her two days. Luckily, she knew the script because she was a producer sure. on the project. But she wasn't prepared to act in the role. Yeah. And in two days, we we got her ready, or she got herself ready, because we were shooting the other parts of the film. Um, and uh, she did a great job. She was really good in the role. Kate was yeah, probably as good or better than the girl that we had cast. Wow. Um, and we, you know, we ended up making a great film, and it, there was a lot of, there was a lot of ups and downs about the whole project, um, but we got it finished, and then it took a long time to to edit, and you know, we we overcame a lot to get there. Had a lot of people that that put in a tremendous amount of hours to do that film, uh, worked tirelessly to to make it work. And people that, uh, actors that really put themselves out there that just, uh, they trusted me and had faith in me to, um, to do their roles. And, you know, I think, I, I don't know if you were there or not, so I'm talking the start of the day. We shot it in August and it was 34 degrees that night. Yep. In the middle of August, the temperature dropped to 34 degrees. We shot the scene outside at night in the middle of the night and freezing cold. Um, so, yeah, the actors just really, you know, they really gave everything they had. And it turned out to be, to me, it just, it's, yeah, I, I still watch it. You know, and it's the one that I'm like, I'll go back and watch, and I wish more people would watch it. And I'm like, oh, please watch this. We're trying to, we're very close to getting a deal to get it on Netflix. And, just got an Italian distributor that wants to distribute it in Italy. Fantastic. So, um, yeah, it's, that's probably the one. Just because it was so close. Uh, you can't go Stephen King uh, because that was my first feature. It has a special place in my heart and also love the cast. Still really close to them. Um, or, I say really close to them, but, I'm, you know, we're close. Mm -hmm. Um that meant a lot because it was the first time I learned so much about the industry. Yeah. Uh, that's one of my favorites. But if, as far as like what's closest to my heart, it probably said Tangled Lake. Just because of the, the work that we had to put in. And I learned yeah. so much about, that's the first thing I really directed. Yeah. I learned so much about myself, about directing, about producing, about the industry, acting, about everything. Yeah. And, I, and I souped to nuts all the way through our first distribution deal. I did everything. So, that was that's that an was undertaking. Tough. Yeah, it was it was awesome. Yeah, and very difficult. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Please watch the film. No, I know that it was very difficult. <laughs> you can find it on iTunes. All right. So. Now, as we wrap up, what is next for Seymour Films? What's on the horizon right now? All right. This year, I'm making 47 films, according to my charts. Woo! No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I feel like... You know, almost a film a week. <laughs> <laughs> if you saw the, the planning board for me, you'd be like, you are on drugs. Major <laughs> drugs. Because it's always fluid. It's like, it's, okay, it's all this stuff's up and it's moving. It's always changing. Who the hell knows what I'm going to do? Probably here. like my probably like my studio with the wall of whiteboard. Yeah. So so I can just flow chart changing. whatever I need to for web design or whatever. What I <laughs> what I do know, uh, I'm doing a lot of writing this year. Um, working on a couple of horror films. Uh, I'm going to go back and do some horror this year. So I'm hoping sometime before the end of the year, I'm going to get one, maybe two small budget horror films shot. Nice. I don't know that we'll get them done this year. If they'll be towards the end of the next, end of this year, first of next year, mm -hmm. um, I'm working on a lot of television stuff right now, um, which I'm very excited about for you. Thanks. That's that's a that's a really fun side of the industry. I've done a few television things myself, and it's different, man. It's yeah. different. It's yeah. great. I, I, some of the things I can't let the cat out of the bag out. I can't let the cat out of the bag yet, but. Um, uh, I'm helping develop a couple of uh, shows. I keep getting asked to do reality TV. I don't really want to do reality TV, but at the same time, I don't mind. I don't mind developing things because yeah. I like developing stuff. So, yeah. um, and, and if I if I think it's viable, 
mm-hmm. uh, and I do. I think there's something uh, something with the show. So we we've got a couple TV projects coming up. Uh, I'm working with a distributor. Uh, I've got a small distribution company. Uh, we signed a deal last year with with a China a Chinese distributor to distribute all the, all of our stuff. So. We're getting that piece of the puzzle all put together. That's a huge piece of the puzzle, though, because there is a huge, huge film industry in China that has popped up. And apparently, there's like a billion people there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a few people to watch some movies. <laughs> all of you, please, just one dollar. Yeah, it. that's it. <laughs> 50 cents each. Yeah, really. Penny. Ticket. But, now, as, as you're moving forward everything else. Um, where can people find the work of Seymour Films? Of course, you said that um, You Can't Kill Stephen King is on Netflix. Uh, Hateful Eight is being worked on going to Netflix. Is that right? <laughs> Hateful Eight. Or, I'm eight. sorry, Tangled Eight. Hateful Eight. Eight. Yes, one. Hateful Eight. Yeah. Back to that, it was yeah. great. Yeah, it was right like it. Sorry. It was my, Tangled Eight. Tangled Eight. I'm very uh, sorry. He's my assistant. Uh, uh, yeah, Quentin. Quentin. <laughs> my, my given name. My nom de plume. Yeah. <laughs> The um, uh, Tangled Eight is hopefully going to be on Netflix. It is available on iTunes. If you go to Seymour Films, uh, there's a Tangled Eight page and there's a link. Is it SeymourFilms.com? SeymourFilms.com. Okay. Um, and there's a link. There's a Tangled Eight page there, and there's a link to where you can buy it. It's also on Vimeo. Um, um, and then again, it'll be. It's supposed to be distributed in in some foreign countries. I don't know what beyond Italy. I don't know. That's mm-hmm. that deal's kind of still going. We're going back and forth on the contract, but uh, um, more than likely Amazon it was Ooh. supposed to be on Amazon nice. last year. The distributor that we our previous distributor kind of dropped the ball on that. Um, not to say anything bad about my distributor, but no, they too. dropped the ball on it. They didn't get it on there. Yeah. Um, so. Um, I think by the end, by sometime this year, it'll be on Amazon, um, probably on Amazon Prime, I'm guessing, uh, instant, and then um, hopefully by that, by the end of the year, or before the end of the year, hopefully on Netflix. Uh, more stuff, see more films again, there's, I always keep that updated with links and things like that. If you want to see uh, trailers, things like that, you can also find them on johnseymour.com. Okay. Um and then uh, Alibi Boys, the ten episodes, the ten episode web series on Alibi Boys is currently on the homepage. You can find it on YouTube uh, okay. through our distributor Giddy Flix, G I D I F L I X. Okay. Um, there's ten episodes of Alibi Boys. There's also trailers for some new things. Blessed is supposed to have a distribution deal coming up. Um, and then we've got a couple short films that we'll probably get out somewhere sometime this year. We're, we're talking about maybe doing a compilation DVD. So you might be able to find that on Amazon. That is fantastic. And I, I, I can't explain how happy I am for you that you have finally landed in your passion, that you've like a duck to water just taken to it <laughs> and are, are swimming full steam ahead. Uh, I'm so entirely proud of you, everything that you've accomplished, every, all the infrastructure that you've set up is absolutely phenomenal, man. Phenomenal. Congratulations on all the hard work Thank paying you. off and everything that's going on. I, I can't even express how proud and happy I am for you. And just seeing the future and the way you're talking about it, the, the horizon is huge for you and for Seymour Films and all the upcoming projects. God bless, man. I hope all of that stuff comes to fruition because oh, you deserve it oh, you gone. deserve it man We're gonna you, make have, sure. you have worked on it for years for year I mean I remember God it was almost a decade ago that I moved to Maine when these these cogs started rolling yeah. um, and to see it coming around is it's a beautiful train to see coming around the bend my friend yeah so thank you while you're online checking out seymourfilms.com stop on by talkingsoundshow.com That is where you can find all of the episodes. You can also find all the technical videos, technical articles, industry news as well from greats like Rupert Neve, MXL, Blackmagic Devices. Everything is right there on the website. You can also visit our Patreon page while you're there. If you believe in what we do, if you like the show, please come on by and be a supporter. I'd like to thank all of the supporters over the last year 
who have uh, been able to donate, get us upgraded to HD from SD, everything else. We thank you so much. It's because of y'all's support that this show happens. Everything on this podcast is free um, right now. So, like, there we don't charge for anything. Um, it's, it's fantastic. I truly believe in the giving back of knowledge. People gave me the knowledge to do what I do. And I love nothing more than to give that knowledge to people so that they can do what they want to do. And on that note, everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you so much, John Seymour, for coming on. Please, let's let's make this a regular thing, man. I'd love to keep updated with what's going on with Seymour Films and any, any knowledge that you can share for up-and-coming filmmakers, up-and-coming actors, up-and-coming audio engineers. ADR people, everything else. This this knowledge of the industry is something that I tell people all the time on the show and in real life. It is not a hidden secret. It's it's not the chamber under the Great Pyramid here that may or may not exist. It It's out there. It's there. Search for it. Find the people that know it and just get in with them, man. Do whatever you have to do to do it. Well, I usually charge for that kind of genius. <laughs> no, I'd be happy to. Yeah, yeah I'd love it. Well, It'd and be fun. Absolutely. You'll, have, you'll either have to come to Vegas or we'll have to Skype it. We can absolutely Skype. Or maybe, I, maybe I can come to Texas. Well, maybe. you better come to Texas. Buddy. But on that note, everybody, thank you so much. Until next time, keep, keep reaching for 11. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Down.